fairly constant concentrations of a product of a reaction. There are a couple of different ways that you could achieve this. So if you have, say, a closed system, what you can get is you can get equilibrium. So if you have a set amount of reactants, imagine that as things go through this funnel, you transform reactants into products. What's going to happen if you start with some amount of reactants is that you're going to basically, you're going to have a set amount of products. And if you try to make more products, basically it'll go back to form reactants. But what's going to happen is that at equilibrium, you're going to end up with this constant, constant amount in here. And if I let it kind of like settle down a little, it's not even going to stop. You're going to have some set amount of products, and that's going to be based on the thermodynamic favorability of the reaction. Okay. Now what's going to happen, though, is so we have equilibrium. We're going to have this constant amount of products and the constant amount of reactants, which currently is stuff that's flowing out of the beaker. But we're not making more products. If we wanted to make more products, well, now basically what we could do is we could take those products out of the equation. When we remove products, we've got our whole like Le Chatelier thing. So basically what's going to happen is as we remove products, more reactants is going to flow into products. And you can see that it's flowing pretty fast because we have a lot of reactants up here that are going to be kind of driving this reaction forward. It's that ratio of the reactants and the products that's going to be determining what's actually like the thermodynamic, like which direction things are going to go. So remember that we have that kind of, um, our equilibrium constant would tell us like at equilibrium, would we have more products or more reactants? But then at any one more minute, it's going to depend on the actual ratios. So you can see that we went really fast at first, but now when we just have a little in here, there's not as much like pressure on it. There's not as much reactants kind of like pushing the drive towards the products. And eventually everything would all just be products. And we wouldn't have this. I remember we started this whole thing trying to figure out how we could have a constant level of things. Well, one way we can have a constant level of things is basically if we start replenishing what we take out. So basically what we can do is if we have this, we are, we're adding basically at the same rate at which we're taking it out, well now we have this set amount, we have the same amount all the time, that same amount that we got like um, when we were before, we were trying to get the same amount with the equilibrium, but here we're constantly making products, but we're replenishing it. So here, this is like steady state. We have a constant, well, when I do it correctly, we have a constant amount of the thing, but we don't have equilibrium. If we had equilibrium, well, first of all, in order to have equilibrium, we'd have to have a closed system. Whoa, that's not the direction that closes this. We would have to have a closed system if we had equilibrium. And we, so we would have constant levels, but we would have no drive. We wouldn't be making any more product. And so that's not what we want to have. We want to have drive, but we still want to have this amount of reactants. And so how we can do this is by drawing away our products, by siphoning them off into other pathways, by basically having this coupled maybe to a reaction that's going to take away the products. So if you kind of like take away, you can imagine there's something like hooked up to this little like side port that I just like sprayed myself on. You can imagine that it's like getting pulled off into a more favorable reaction. And so that's how we can kind of drive whole pathways. We can drive unfavorable reactions even by coupling them to favorable reactions. And we can still maintain fairly constant levels of things because you can imagine like if you were constantly changing the levels of everything, like how would your cells ever like cope? Like they wouldn't know what to expect and it would just be like chaos, especially because how we saw like various pathways and stuff could get regulated, but if you have and levels like going all over the place and there's no sort of like set line, then how do you know whether you want to go higher or lower or all this stuff? And so this idea of a steady state is really important that you're kind of able to keep these constant levels, but have, have there be drive. Because remember, if things are at equilibrium, there is no drive. There is no drive to do anything at equilibrium. We don't want to be at equilibrium. For a lot of things, we'll want to be kind of near equilibrium because then what's going to happen is that if you have a little more or something, what's going to happen is you'll start going in the other direction. You'll start like going the other way. 
And so this is going to be a good way you can kind of like control the levels of various, control which direction a reaction will go, because remember that depends on our ratio of our products to our reactants. And so if we have more of our products than to our reactants at equilibrium, or not at equilibrium, just at this point in time, then we would have it at equilibrium, which direction will we go? We have more products. Our Q is higher. Yeah, we'd go backwards. And what if we had less products? Yeah, we'd make more product. Yeah. So basically, that's that's the basic idea. But if we had such a large, like, if we had such a large KEQ or whatever that you had a big barrier you could, you had to get over, then having you would that would be harder to go back and forth. But sometimes you do want those big go back and forth, and so that's often those steps that we see ATP come into play. So in that example, basically our two would be all the way full. Whereas if you had something that's less favorable, it'd be kind of like less full. Um, but that's the basic idea. Now, can enzymes change the thermodynamic favorability? No, they can't. Enzymes, basically, they can just change how fast you get to equilibrium. So you can imagine that, okay, this is going to get messy. You can imagine that if this funnel was really narrow, it would have a high activation barrier. It would be hard to reach that equilibrium. An enzyme, it kind of like widens the barrier. It makes it faster to reach that equilibrium, but it doesn't change the amount that's in here. I might just have to wait not as long for the tube to get filled up, or I might have to wait longer if it has a higher activation barrier and this sort of thing. So enzyme is just changing the rate at which you reach equilibrium, but it's not gonna change the equilibrium. With steady state, what we're doing is we're still going to have a constant level of something, but we're going to do it by continuously replenishing the things that we take out. And this allows us to have reactions happen because we have things not at equilibrium, and if things are at equilibrium, there's no drive to do anything. So now we maintain our drive to do stuff by replenishing what we remove. If we stop replenishing it, well, we're quickly gonna run it, we're gonna run into problems. And the bigger the drive, the faster you're gonna kind of like, the more drive there is to push through. Whereas when you start like getting low, this is kind of like our KEQ is going, our Q is gonna be approaching our KEQ, then things kind of like stop happening. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean this up and you guys are gonna get to work on your practice sheets.